research on viruses, and I study the virus group pox viruses. And the reason for that is that uh, there are a number of pox viruses that are concerned medically and also as a bioterrorism concern. It was identified as the chief bioterrorism concern of the U.S. government. Um, smallpox killed over 500 million people in the first 75 years of the 20th century. Um, so it's a formidable pathogen. And so I work on improving vaccines for pox viruses and also studying how pox viruses make people sick and especially the genes that are involved that make them sick. And my lab identified one gene that is able to turn off the mammalian immune response and so that allows the virus to grow. And then it's kind of a race between the response of the immune system and the ability of the virus to grow and overtake the body. So um, we've filed a patent on that gene, ECU has a patent, and it's very useful because we can remove the gene from the virus and make a safer vaccine. Also, because it blocks the immune system, when we remove the gene from the virus, you get a better immune response to the vaccine. And we can use this vaccine not only for pox viruses, but we can also use it to treat any other um, infectious disease or cancer. Um, pox viruses have been used to treat cancer because the body's immune system doesn't recognize cancer cells because they're self. They don't recognize it as a foreign uh, invader. So we can use the virus to trigger the immune response and get the body to recognize the cancer cells as foreign. And there has been some success with this clinically, but the immune response isn't quite good enough. So we've tried to use my virus, which it has an improved immune response, and using that to target cancer cells in the body. Viruses are really cool because they've been co-evolving with mammals for all these years. And although they don't think and they don't intend anything, evolution over time has, they've created the ability to do so many things in cells. They can target the cell, they can enter the cell, they can take over the host cell machinery, they can turn down the host cell ability to make proteins, and they can control everything the cell does, and even what the body does. They can turn off the immune response. So they've been a tremendous tool for scientists to study cell biology, mammalian immunology. So when we watch what the virus does to a cell or to a body, we can learn what the how the body works, how it functions, how the immune system works. I've gotten uh, grants from the North Carolina Biotechnology Center, um, from CERCEB, which is funded through the National Institutes of Health, and CERCEB is the Southeast Regional Center for Excellence in Biodefense and Emerging Infectious Diseases. And we've also been funded by the UNC Lineberger uh, Comprehensive Cancer Center um, to look at uh, the ability to use a, a virus to make a good vaccine against cancers. I've developed an, an algorithm to find pox virus genes that are likely to be immunoregulatory. And these genes are unique in pox viruses. Um, pox viruses share a lot of genes that herpes viruses have, but they have different immunoregulatory genes because they were evolving differently at the same time the mammalian immune response was evolving. And so they're different genes. So if we look at genes in pox viruses that do not match genes in herpes viruses, and there are a couple other criteria we can use as well, these genes are likely to be involved in regulating the immune system. And these are very interesting for a number of reasons. One is that we can remove these genes from vaccine strains and make better vaccine strains that are safer and give a better immune response. But the other thing that's been very interesting that's been done with some of these genes is to use the virus genes to turn off immune responses in humans that we don't want. So you could use these viral genes um, to turn off inflammation and immune responses in cases such as um, cardiovascular work where they clear out the arteries and sometimes there's inflammation that occurs after that that's problematic for the patients. Also, we could use this, uh, some of these viral genes potentially when we're doing organ transplants. 
to turn off the immune system, or in immuno um, autoimmune diseases such as MS, lupus. Um, so hopefully we can use these viruses and harness the you know evolutionary gene potential that they have made and use that to treat humans clinically. So to study viruses, we have to grow cells and tissue culture um, because viruses are only alive and active when they're inside of a living cell. So we have cells that we can grow in tissue culture dishes with media and under the right gas conditions and the right temperature. So we have to be able to grow the cells first and then we can infect the cells with the virus and then the virus can grow. And what we do to look at virus growth and to count the number of viruses that we have in a solution, or make a titer of the virus, is that we grow a monolayer of cells on, on a plate and then we put the virus in different concentrations, do a dilution across the plate and put it in the incubator for a couple days. And the virus will land on one cell, attach, enter it, go through the replication cycle and make about a hundred more viruses per cell. And then it'll spread to the next cell and the next cell. And as it does this, it kills the cells. So it ends up leaving a hole in the monolayer. And so we take the plate out about two days later and take off the media and then we fix and stain the cells with a purple dye, crystal violet. And then we can see how many holes there are in the monolayer. And these holes are called plaques. And that's how we can both count how many viruses were present in the solution that we added. And also we can tell something about how the virus can grow and spread. If it's a large plaque, the virus was able to replicate well and spread well between the cells. And if we've made a gene knock out. Um, we can see if it's affecting the ability of the virus to replicate and spread because then the hole would be much smaller because the virus wasn't able to spread in the cells in the dish. One of the things that I really like about East Carolina University is its mission. Um, to do research, teaching, and service to help the people of Eastern North Carolina. And I think that, that ECU and the Brody School of Medicine really has a much higher commitment to the community and to the students than I've seen at other places um, that I've worked or known about. The, the faculty here really care about teaching students and they really train us a lot in teaching and I've learned a lot since I've been here. Um, and one thing that I like particularly about microbiology and immunology department is that it's a mixture of people that study different diseases. And so we do bacteria, we do viruses, and we do immune responses and immunologic diseases. And it's really nice that we're attached to the medical school where patients are treated and to the hospital where patients are treated. And this makes it um, possible for us research scientists in the lab to always be thinking about how our research can be applied clinically and to remember the importance that what we're doing is actually trying to save lives and stop suffering. <laughs>